Okay, go ahead. Hey, good morning. I will call the meeting to order at 9.01. Um, first point of order is confirmation of the agenda. I would like to add one item, probably put down under 5.6, uh, just a brief update from Councillor Bell on conversations of the summer music. And if either of you um, have anything to add to that, or if I can get a motion to accept that. We'll accept. Okay, second I'll by second. Councillor Rose. We'll, we'll uh, say that is accepted. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest from anyone? Nope. Seeing none, we will move forward. Uh, the, I guess this will be for Chris, the adoption of the minutes from December 14th. Um, <clears throat> I move that they be adopted. Okay, and I will second that. Um, seeing no negative response from Council Rose, we'll say that is no. um, moved. So I just want to take a minute to welcome Councillor Rose to our committee. Thank you for, I'm not sure if you voluntarily joined our committee or not, <laughs> but you're with us now. So just wanted to thank um, again, Councillor Marshall for his hard work over the years and the deputy mayor and now Councillor Rose, welcome. I hope you feel welcome. Make sure, yes. ask any questions you need to along the way. Um, most of our Items are pretty straightforward. So, yeah. Nice Perfect. second. Matt. Great. All right. So, I did send off the draft of the land acknowledgement. Um, it's presented for your review. Uh, my intention was to get it into your hands to get um, it, wasn't, it was chicken or the egg. Um, I wanted to get a, you to. Um, at this point, my plan is to get into your hands so that you have time to digest it. Um, and But I would also like permission from the committee to send it to the clerk's office for comment and review, um, looking for obviously anything that would conflict with existing procedures or policies or um, precedent changing or anything that we would want to take into consideration before it becomes, um, become, before it becomes an official recommendation recommendation to council. Um, yeah, uh, Christopher, I can I can give you a little bit of background, Councilor Rose. So we, I don't know if we intentionally went looking for it, but the discussions were had back again, early 2019, like, oh, we don't have one. Do we want one? What would it look like? Um, and got the ball rolling on it. And it's been now three years since that process started. <laughs> um, I covered a lot of it in, I, not all of it, for sure. There's a lot much more information. And I was trying to be as broad as I could with the points that are included. But there's definitely lots more that we found along the the way that aren't included just because you could keep writing and writing when it comes to history at some point you have to go okay we got to get it on but um thinking back of just um, especially the uh the finding of the grave sites last year where just kind of reopened um the discussion in the national debate on truth and reconciliation uh, and what that means and how that would look and then obviously with the national day of truth truth and reconciliation reconciliation last year um all those things kind of combined if going we need to do something and we um this is what i think the way i've, I've worded it is that at this point this is our best recommendation for what we do and it's not meant to be a you know this is just whatever you should do forever and ever it's meant of like at this now in this season this is what we want to do and hope that um it becomes a continuous thing um from the settler side of things to continue on truth and reconciliation you know indefinitely as we figure out how we we balance our history with moving forward and so that was the overall approach that was taken with it so do you either of you two have any questions or comments at this stage no not me are you, um, so if I, I would suggest the motion to, um, that committee members take time to review, 
come back to the chair with any um, specific questions, comments, recommendations, and also seek permission to give it to the clerk's our office for their review. And um, if you, though we could do it uh, two ways, either if, if you guys, if the committee reviews and feels like no major changes are, it's not, it's not finals. There, there are a couple pieces that I do need to, um, just some details I need to confirm before it goes. Um, but if no major changes are, then if you would give me the authorization to recommend it to council once I, once I feel like it is ready, um, or would you, ref would you prefer scheduling it for the next meeting to come back with the, the final before it goes to council for a review? Yep, Councillor Rice. I think, <clears throat> excuse me. I think uh, uh, just for me, if nothing else, uh, if we could go over it at the next meeting and just be absolutely sure yep. before we send it, if that's okay. Yep. No, that's that's great. And okay. I, again, I was kind of a chicken or the <laughs> six, one half dozen of the other. Um, no, that's fine. Um, so so then uh, I'll put for the motion um, that the report be reviewed by the committee to be addressed at the next um, Heritage and Culture Committee, as well as sent to the clerk's office to review um, and ask them to have their results for us for the next committee meeting. Sounds okay. good, thank you. Okay. I second that. Okay, and I guess that will be considered passed. All right, so we're now on to the Pizza Hut proposed drawings. So they have come <clears> back, <throat> um, definitely have um, taken our suggestions for the coloring, trying to reduce the black down to give more of the existing brown. Um, fascia and I don't I don't have the last one in front of me I don't think the fonts have changed as we had said but we also I'm assuming that um, they probably went to corporate and corporate probably said no we're Pizza Hut and this is what font we're using so opening up for Christopher <laughs> to have, okay. have what you want to say. I, I don't mean to be difficult, but um, I, I have the same objections. It's the logo. I mean, it's just not period correct. And I, and I realized that, that you know, Pizza Hut is not going to change their, um, their graphics for one small location in one small town. Yeah. Um, so I guess it, it, what it comes down to is a matter of sort of whether we, say this is as good as it's going to get and we live with it or whether we uh, draw a line in the sand and I'm not sure that I, I don't hmm, I don't know how to phrase this I'm not sure it'd be, it would be entirely fair to go back to the franchisee owner and say no you can't put that sign up because that's their business yeah I mean that the sign is their business um, but at the same time I'm still not happy about the sign so that that's that's my um, well, uh, that's and, my yeah and we we did talk about the precedent and and fair enough that just because other existing signs are on in line with some such things i guess the question i mean i mean the approach we could take would be to say this we're not happy about this and but it is it at least it keeps with the existing aesthetic of the other um, places that are established there and then develop some sort of ruling for going forward for anybody else i i, I think i mean what well, we, we can always make an exception for this um and not based on the fact that B and B has a more modern sign. Just to say, right. okay, well, that that was before our times. So we have no, we can't do anything about that. Uh, but say, okay, we will. They they did make an effort. They did make some changes. So we'll say, okay. Uh, but in future, 
um, we will, in future, it would be an idea for those, for anyone wanting to do something like this to um, sort of let us know ahead of time. Yep. Uh, and also that we should probably, I, my personal opinion is that we should um, do our best to adhere to the guidelines, which we right. will make an exception for this time. But in the future for any other situation, we'll say, okay, no, you know, we made it clear last time that that was the, that was the exception. Um, and we won't, this won't be an ongoing process where we, where we bend to the, we right. bend the rules for um, a new business. That, that's my suggestion. So if, if I could uh, uh, get up to speed here on this. Yep. What did, uh, what do you folks find so offensive about that sign? Because I thought with, with the burgundy and the brick, I thought it kind of looked nice. Yeah, so the the first one, I guess we that, yeah, that was to get you up to speed. We should have sent it, you the first iteration. The first one, they had replaced the brown with all black. Oh. Um, and we said we wanted, we wanted to <laughs> limit the percentage of, <laughs> of the signage to, to maintain the, that brown strip as much as possible. And that's what they've come back with this revision to basically, rather than um, having a full sign at that top portion, they've um, reduced their signage and their, and the black around the white so that it's um, minimal as they can maintaining their brand within the brown. Okay. Um, so the other recommendation we had was to adjust the font to match the Hicks house one, but um, mm -hmm. We weren't sure that they would, corporate would let them. I, so, I so, don't think corporate would do that. No. That's so part of we thing, asked, right? yeah, and we asked the question, and they've come back with this one that looks like they didn't. So that's why I say I'm assuming that corporate said no. This is our font, and that's what we're doing. Well, so, I, so I, what, I don't think it was. Sorry, ahead, I, sorry. I was going to say I, I don't think it was a question of that that it was found offensive. It was just found inappropriate for the for the setting. And it, and it was the, primarily, it, it's that Pizza Hut logo um, that, at, at least personally, I, I find that to be um, inappropriate for a, a heritage building. But then, you know, we also have to be practical and say, well, you, you don't want to prevent the business from yeah. coming into town and say, no, you can't do it. And the other thing, too, is that may, regardless of what we decide, uh, council makes the final decision. All we do is we recommend to council. So, you know, we could say, no, we don't want that. It doesn't fit. And council could say, well, too bad. There's a business there. So um, we have to keep that in mind that we are not the, the final arbiters of this. But, but they did, I just, um, they did. And I think it looks a little bit, I mean, again, you're, this is very subjective. They did change the logo from just the I don't know what it is. I call it the red Pizza Hut hat. It looks like a cowboy hat to me. <laughs> I'm not sure what that has to do with pizza. But they had the hat was just a big red hat, and they, it looks like they've switched it to the white hat with the red stamp thing, um, which I think fits a little bit nicer too. It's it's a little less modern. Um, but again, we're going a uh, however many hundred and whatever years after so anything's going to look modern unless unless it was like the hicks cafe before where the hicks i mean that was ideal the hicks cafe essentially took the hicks house um and just moved it over and called it the hicks cafe keeping the font and the style pretty much exactly so that mm -hmm. i think i think that's where um i, I think that was the easier of like even as a recommendation from the heritage committee saying like that would be ideal. That would be the, if we could say, if everybody moves in there and you, this is what you do, that's what we would say. And then we would make exceptions as they are, you know, like as close to that as possible is, is would be our ideal. Is that a fair way? Just speak, and thinking out loud, Chris. Yes. Um, yeah. Because I, ideally we just didn't want that, Pizza Hut logo up there because it is modern. 
Um, but, you know, as, as I mentioned before, I think, um, you know, this is sort of, this discussion probably should have happened before they made a commitment to move in there. Um, but that didn't, so they shouldn't be punished because um, basically the township of West Perth didn't say to them, okay, we, you know, we need to have this discussion first. I'm I'm just saying that for future situations, if if it could be, I'm not sure whether the building department or who would do this, but um, if if there's another business proposal before any contracts are signed or leases are signed, um, they you know the building, whatever arm of West Perth municipality of West Perth would take care of this would say to them, okay, we need to discuss the sign or we need to see your proposals for a sign and this could be dependent on um, the appropriateness of the sign. And again, I mean, this, this is all, this is all, um, you know, none of this is, is binding because ultimately council will decide what happens. Yeah. But as an advisory committee, I think we should try to stick to our stated goals. Sorry, I'll I'll stop talking about it now. Yeah, no. So I'll so um so I th I hear basically two two motions. One would say um you know we we recognize that the effort from the Pizza Hut franchisee to get as close to historically appropriate and accept the existing drawing as presented and recommend to council or building department. I'm not sure, Jeff, maybe you can, are we recommending to the building department that, or are we recommending to council to accept this package as presented? Um, I frankly am not that familiar with the process. It's really a building department driven process. So I think you can comment with your recommendations to the building department. At this point in time, I believe that they've that this project has moved on. So really, um, I think you're talking, you know, your discussion is good advice for the future. Yeah. Um, so I think your, rec your recommendation is fine. Okay. And then a second recommendation would be to um, have the discussion on stand um, ideal standards for signage at the in historic buildings within West Perth developed. Is that what you're thinking, Chris? And and, and this would only apply to designated buildings as well. Yes. Yeah. No, one, one thing I've been trying to find out and I haven't had any response yet is surely there is a list somewhere because I think probably we should have this as the Heritage Advisory Committee, um, a list somewhere of designated buildings in West Perth. Um, because the, you know, as I said, this only applies to designated buildings and yeah. only if uh, signage was part of the, the designation on those buildings. So I think if, if we could get a little bit of background, um, if, if we could at least get a list of the buildings that have been designated, um, then we would know. And asked also the department, <clears throat> excuse me, then if, if someone else, another business comes in and and says, okay, we'd like to do this, consult the list and say, okay, that building's not designated, you can do whatever you want, or that's designated, um, you need to requirements. And that, that sort of just takes the confusion away. I think it will make it easier for everyone um, and certainly will make it more transparent. Yep. Did you get so, that over you. at the office, Jeff? Yeah, through you, Chair. Uh, yes, you did. And um, the the uh, the designated heritage properties are um, listed in the county official plan. I believe there's eight of them. We'll get you the list, and I may be able to get you a list here real quick. I I, I wasn't going quick enough on my Google search, but <laughs> I can get you that list. Um, maybe by the time you voted, or we can provide it after the meeting. But they are laid out in the official plan, county's official plan. Thank you. Um, do, do we need to make a motion for that, Jeff, to 
do that or we just add that to the next agenda like the next meeting <laughs> agenda to, to discuss further yeah i think i think direction is fine that you'd like to have that on the next meeting agenda to yeah. see the list of the properties and i think it'll bring this conversation to a bit of a um it'll distill the conversation around i think what you're looking for is what are the guidelines? How you know? How does the um, policy kick in? So yep. we'll get you the background policy that's in the official plan. Okay. So, Thank you. So. Good idea. Um, okay. So that will we'll just assume mm -hmm. that we're approving that for ourselves to do next meeting. So really, the only motion we're looking for right now is to, um, you know, heritage heritage committee um, accepts the proposed package and does not have any um have anything for, further to say i guess well, how about, I, I, we, we accept the, the package as presented so i'll okay. second that all right the i will third which means it's passed so good no and i and i think that's a good plan we'll and we'll try to head off for the next one um for sure have a figure out what we're doing a little bit better for the next time that this rolls around and I also um Jeff I think the BIA has rules of as well if we could get those from or or at least whatever I guess we want to know whatever processes there are for especially that downtown area and the designated buildings existing from if they could if we could get a report from staff so we have a better idea of of what what all the systems are at play yeah and the bia has no um no role in that planning other okay. than any individual could comment uh through whatever open public comment process but the bia bia is uh a marketing uh a marketing organization frankly and not okay. Yeah. So, well, that's okay. what I thought, and I couldn't remember yeah. if they they were were involved in what signs go up or not, or if it's just no, okay. no. We have a sign bylaw. There's a sign bylaw, so I think you know you want the background of what the sign bylaw says and uh, the list that's in the official plan, and and the list is buried in the official plan a little deeper than I'm going to be able to find on the yeah. fly. So, okay, sounds good. Well, you can you can stay on, Jeff, since we've got um lost villages program update yeah now i've got to change all the screens i had open okay i'm not going to do uh, I'll, I'll just give you <laughs> just, a verbal just go update. by go, go yeah. by memory <laughs> yeah um so on the lost villages committee and this will help to bring uh our member uh our new member uh councillor rose up to date um the the heritage committee had a working group a working meeting on october 15th and talked about um the, the concept of a heritage uh, village recognition for those crossroads where we're losing structures or losing buildings and the village names eventually get lost. And um, we've got some great background from the Perth County Atlas and we've got some, uh, some history books and, and things that we can refer to. And this committee would like to come up with some kind of a recognition program um, that will um, keep those villages alive, the history of those villages alive, and uh, perhaps acknowledge them, even if it's a sign that says, you know, when you're going through the village, historically Motherwell, or, um, and there's others, historically Farquhar. There's, there's quite a few. And, um, and so the committee would like to sort of work through the process of uh, doing the background research, uh, establishing the website, and then eventually putting up a, a sign that would tell the community that they're going through that historic village and, um, and direct them to some place where they can get more information if they're interested, which would be the West Perth website. So that's the overall concept. That working meeting was left that um, I would, uh, and we had Meredith Forge, who's County Economic Development uh, Manager, Economic Development and Tourism Manager, join us for that meeting. And my job was to write up those notes and, and they're not done. Um, there's some things happening and uh, I just haven't got to it, but that's the concept that I think we'll be pursuing. And I want to mention to this committee that we put $1,900 in the budget for 20, 
22, which is the amount that you had in the budget for last year. Um, I think the way we're anticipating the Heritage uh, Villages Recognition Program unfolding, it would be research and work on the website um, and, and building that sort of research on the website and then uh, you know, maybe do one village per year with recognition signs, which I think we moved away from the concept of plaques and more towards the concept of, of a highway sign or, or a, a road sign that meets the spec that perhaps is a different color, like, uh, like that color of that Hicks House sign where it's that, I'm not even sure how to describe that color. Um, but that's kind of the color that Zora Township uses down in Oxford County, and they do stand out, and it's different than the blue road signs. So that's the concept. Anything to add, Christopher or uh, Jesse? No, I, that pretty much sums it up, I think, okay. from what I remember. Yeah. Sounds good. So my apologies for not having had an opportunity to write that up. I have a, a bit of a related update where I've been doing some work and that's on the Motherwell project and uh, but I'll do that in the next update. But if and if there's no other questions, I'll move right into that next update. Great. So um, obviously, as we've been going through this conversation, one of the um, one of the sort of um, points where where you know you can see the importance of this kind of discussion comes around Motherwell, and Motherwell is a village down in Fullerton that um, we are. Um, that's currently you know it was purchased by the conservation authority because it's in floodplain with the intention of taking the buildings down. The course of time has passed. They built buildings. Some buildings have been removed, and they're getting closer and closer to that time when the last sort of substantial buildings are are being taken down and, and we, it's, that's that moment where the village is lost. And uh, obviously the memories of the community and, and, uh, and the, the features that are there like the Motherwell Bridge and the church up at the corner, the Presbyterian church up at the corner and things stay, but the, the you know, the, those structures that are right at the intersection are kind of lost. And, and so we've been using Motherwell to kind of guide our thinking and as the the kind of test case for what this program would look like. And the nice thing about Motherwell, there's a ton of research. So that's where we'll be continuing. And there's a great book out there, um, which when I'm finished reading, I'll pass on to someone else and we all have to get it back to Councillor Matheson who loaned it to me. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, so one of the things we're doing with building the municipal office, um, we, we had a number of, and it relates to Motherwell because we had a number of um, driving principles for the design of the municipal office. We wanted to um, have accessibility. So we wanted no ramps. We wanted a really good um, economical product for West Perth. We wanted it to be, you know, efficient, um, but not, you know, not over the top as far as it's, um, it wanted to be functional. And one of the, uh, one of the driving principles that the building committee developed for the uh, municipal office was that we celebrate our heritage and you know the recognition that we're moving away from a 1924 built purpose-built school building into a new building and there must be ways we can bring our heritage um, and celebrate our heritage and bring it along with us so one of the things we we built into the municipal office was the concept of a feature wall <clears throat> and so um, the feature wall is and I'm going to just jump ahead one one slide here and show you that if you can see my screen, um, the entrance to the municipal office uh, from Wellington Street is to the right on this picture. So the public, there's a parking lot out here with 19 parking spaces. The uh, public could come in and enter. And then uh, if anyone's been around the, the municipal office, the shells there, they're pouring the concrete floor today. Um, the entrance door is to the side and it's in a kind of, it looks like a tower. It's really not a tower. It's kind of a short roofed structure at the front that gives structure to the front of the building. So uh, the public enters in and the main front doors, um, you enter into a lobby area and the lobby area, you come up to the staff wickets and then there's a very, on the left is council chambers. On the right is a new community room, which will focus on seniors programming. Um, so this is the council chambers with the council table at the front. The right is the community room. And if you proceed ahead, you come up to the wickets, the service wickets. 
The service wickets, it's a very open concept and you can sort of see through. And the first thing that you see is a large wall right here, which is the, the end wall on the vault or the, the side wall on the vault. There's a fireproof vault built into the building, which a municipality requires to have. And so we decided that we would make that a feature wall. And uh, the dimensions of this wall, if I'm not mistaken, it's 35 feet or it's in that 35 foot range long by 11, I think it's 11 feet tall. And it's a very prominent thing that you walk in and see. And so the vision all the way along is that we do something with that wall to make it a feature wall. And brick is a really logical choice for a feature wall because of its durability and it's the economics of brick is really good. It looks great inside a building and also um, it's got great sound features. It's good for sound management. So um, when we've been working through the project, we obviously approved the concept of the feature wall and then start to figure out where are we going to get brick. So I have been following Motherwell pretty closely and um, we've been looking for sources for reclaimed brick for the feature wall and the goal was to use Perth County materials. We wanted to use reclaimed rather than new distressed. There's a new distressed product out there that's very economical, but it's kind of cheating. Um, we want it to have brick with provenance. And so we wanted something that had some connection back to our community. And, and so the work that we've kind of focused on, the main, the area that we focused on is this option of using the yellow brick from the Motherwell store. The Motherwell store is slated for demolition probably in about April. They have a lot of um, uh, asbestos that has to be dealt with because of some of the renovations that were done with that store of the year. So it's a bit of a complicated renovation, but the brick on that store is good quality credited yellow brick. It's from the 1840s. The store is double bricked and maybe even triple bricked. Uh, we went out with um, uh, a man from Lumley, Lumley Brick and uh, took a look at the, uh, and his name is Bart Lumley. Um, Bart met us out there. We took a look at the brick, pulled a brick off. Um, we could see, you know, get a good look at the bricks, very high quality brick and really a great target for this project. So the real trick with this is gonna to be to coordinate the demolition permit, the hazardous material removal, and then the Lumley brick work to take the building down, uh, provide the brick that's needed for the feature wall and then retain the rest of the brick. And the conservation authority is the manager of that project. And we're only the recipient of the benefit. So I'm just working with the conservation authority about making sure this timing will work because we want to build that. We want to put that feature wall up. We want it to be um, the Masons want to get that brick and do it in May. And so everything appears to be coming together. And uh, I think it's great news for the project. The, this is a couple of pictures of the Motherwell store. And um, these are zoomed in pretty close because I was really looking at the quality of the brick. This is the front side that you see from line 16. And this is the side. Um, it's uh, like I said, built in I should know the date exactly, but I think it's 1842, but it's in, in that vintage <clears throat> of when it was built. And um, it's a quite a solid old structure, but it's, it's, it's time has come. Um, I grabbed the broken brick, Bart Lumley took the good brick that we pulled out. So mine has a corner off of it, but um, I didn't want to rip another one out. It was good enough to show the quality. So the quality of the brick's beautiful. And what they do with brick like this is, um, they use the inside. So the outside's quite weathered and has quite a lot of crud on it, um, but they use the inside. So the key thing was pull a couple of bricks off, see what kind of shape they're in, what kind of um, sound they have when you hit them with a hammer, and, um, and also to see what the inside looked like and confirm if it's local good quality brick, because there are some local soft brick, and this is good hard brick, local brick. And the one project that's nearby, so right at the corner of, um, the Fullerton Road going south and the Motherwell Road, which is line 16. There's a um, there's the Presbyterian Church there that did an addition sometime in the last 10 or 15 years. And I haven't got a great picture of this. I want to get back down and get a better picture. But they did a little side <laughs> addition um, and uh, for their side door. And they used reclaim local brick, which is credited brick. And it'll be almost identical in the way that it'll look on the feature wall. So Bart Lumley 
knew about that project and it was less than a mile away and pointed it out to us and that's a great perspective. So that's the update on where um, the feature wall project is going. We have a number of potential other ideas about how we're going to incorporate heritage into the building, but that's the main one I want to give the Heritage Com and Culture Committee an update on today. Any questions? No. Nope. Thanks. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, very enthusiastic <laughs> about that one and maybe giving you more detail than you want, but I think... Um, <laughs> I think we want to make sure that, you know, it's not lost on me and, and as a staff person that there's cultural heritage in this community. And while the school's not culturally significant or this old school that ran is not culturally or architecturally significant, I do think we have a responsibility to bring some of our history with us. And, and, and it's not that difficult to do. This is very economical, the way that we're doing this in the end. So. Great. All right, and you're on the, uh, you, you got the next item too, Jeff, with the operational budget. Okay, and I'm actually gonna introduce you to Dan Hobson, who is our clerk. And uh, it's kind of a twofold thing. Dan did a bit of work on the budget with Wendy uh, McMurray, our treasurer. And so Dan offered to present it and I knew you were gonna have heard probably enough of me. So I said, um, <laughs> where it was on the agenda. Murray deals with this on every other Monday night, uh, two times a month. Um, uh, so um, Dan, I, I wanna introduce Dan. Dan is the clerk and manager of legislative services. He's the, uh, and, and Dan will be receiving, uh, Jesse too will be looking at the policy we talked about earlier. Um, and so Dan's gonna present the budget. Are you gonna share your screen, Dan? Or and we can decide. And Dan may have locked up. Look at that. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good first impression. <laughs> Somebody better make sure that William Street is still, uh, still. Uh, oh, we may have lost him. Back yeah. To I, oh, there we go. Uh, That's all good. I'll leave my video off. It seems to be having an issue uh, with the internet. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me today. I wanted to make a comment about uh, a guy named Brick talking about Brick, but. <laughs> well, it's gone. <laughs> he's he's passionate about it. Um, I will try to screen share, but he did kind of ruin most of the budget because we don't have a huge budget uh, for this committee. But I'm going to try it. Um, I, I don't know if I need a motion yeah. while Dan does that. Let me jump ahead to my item, um, for the summer. Cause that'll give Dan, it's not long. Um, so the, so council Rose, we've, um, supported the, uh, and again, I'm pretty sure it's BIA. Um, Councilor bell has done a lot of the work for the summer series concerts in the park um went on last year last spring went on to do some virtual things we never got around there so we basically as a committee um from our culture point support that and had some money um set aside for them to help them with the with the events so really the update for this year is they're doing a um i think it's the valentine's day one Again, a concert, a virtual concert that's in the works and didn't require any assistance from us. And then um, probably at the April meeting, we will see if we have any idea of what the summer is going to look like from then. And I'll bring, um, hopefully that by then we'll at least have some sort of idea on what the summer plan will be. And then we'll uh, bring that to committee at that point to if they need help, don't need help or whatever that is. Um, I think it was two, man, all the days blend in, let alone the years. Two years ago, we we committed to be at the events as representatives. Um, I think we committed to two and I think Councillor Marshall did both of them, if I remember correctly, um, just as a, a sign of support for the community that we are here and 
um, we're supporting that. So nothing really, no, no items to address until the next meeting. And then we won't know until the next meeting if there is anything to address either. So that is the update for the summer. Um, that's it, that's all I got. All right, I think we're ready. Yeah, can everyone see the, the screen yep. now? Yep. Okay, thank you for that. So I'll just point out here, um, as Serial Brick noted the uh, $1,900 here for projects for the committee. I heard him talk about that earlier and we've included mileage. Um, obviously we're not using it right now, but hopefully we'll meet in person eventually and there'll be some things to drive to. So we've brought that budget forward. You can see our actuals for the past three years um outside we haven't we haven't used anything out of this and um, likely from the COVID standpoint and we did have a $300 for miscellaneous advertising printing and I think if there were some advertising or printing that the committee needed to do for an event we would certainly absorb that cost through our uh, community uh sorry our communication budget um, from the municipality as a whole so if there's any questions or comments that happy to, to answer them. And with Jeff here, we can certainly get a little more history. So um, if I could ask, I'm looking at 2019 actual. At the bottom there in bold print, 21,900. And then in 2020, it's got the 28,000 in brackets. What does all that mean? Um, Jeff can probably speak to it a little bit better than I can, but this was a um, transfer of balances for the fire hall tower, I believe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. The decision was made that the reserves that the Heritage Committee, Heritage and Culture Committee had built up over the years with Bob Burtonshaw's sort of passion for the uh, clock tower, the clock. Uh, went into the fire hall project in the course of those transactions. Okay, thank you. And do we do we have reserves rebuilding? I can't remember where we ended up after the clock was done. Yes, so uh, the unspent money from last year will in theory drop into your reserve because we didn't, we haven't done anything with uh, the 2021 budget. Um, and I would think what the target for this committee mainly is, is this um, Lost Villages program. So that money will carry forward and then the municipality will fund it. And this is a bit of, it is like you said earlier in the meeting, Jesse, a chicken and an egg about, you know, we don't know exactly how much money it'll cost per year, per, per village to do. But I think we just uh, plan to do one. We get the signage, we do it, we see what the cost is and then we can refine the budget as we move forward and you have that bit of reserve to rely on. And I think you're looking at spending a bit of money as well, perhaps to support the uh, the music in the park that you just mentioned. So um, again, if that $1,900 isn't enough, you've got the buffer of the reserve and, and um, if you have an initiative that's really good, um, we can probably pre-approve for next year's budget. So we can find a way to fund it. If you've got a project that that you want to get done, we will we'll do it somehow. And um, the big broad scope of background for Councillor Rose is we, um, part of the reason why we, we uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Try to, I, what I'm trying to do, Councillor Rose is go, how far back do I go to explain what I'm trying to explain? How much do you want to know? Um, we, we started, um, the land acknowledgement came out of the signage, which came out of grant money that came out of the community signs that I believe came from the province. Um, so there's kind of, we've got all these signage streams and we had, so the ones that when we're going into, um, well, Dublin's closest to me where it says, um, we changed them from just Dublin to J Dublin, a community of West Perth. Um, that was a grant and I'm pretty sure that was the provincial grant. And so we looked at doing the gateway signs because we don't have, our, we have the provincial West Perth population sign, but unlike um, jurisdictions around us, we don't have the West, anything that's West Perth of that's like, welcome to West Perth 
um, you know, like you do going into Mitchell, where like the big the big signs there. So that tied in with the Lost Villages with the historic signs, which like we've got lots of opportunities where we could spend money and we're trying to be practical and not bite off too much more than we can chew and keep our ear to the ground for if the province comes back again and says, hey, we're we'll give ten thousand dollars for communities that don't have gateway signs, then kind of always have that and running in the background of as funds like that become available. Um, if they come available. Um, and if there's ever any grant, then we can sneak in. That would be the ideal and then try to be practical on how much we can do with the, within our budget. Um, as Jeff just said, try to go, okay, maybe if we have about $1,900, maybe we can get one, we can get Motherwell done this year. And then maybe we can find more grant money from another, you know, from the Ministry of Tourism or whatever it is as we go mm -hmm. along to mm -hmm. say how we can justify asking for those as as funds become available but at least try to get started with um <clears throat> overall concept of where we want to go and then just figure out how fast we can get there thank you did i leave anything out chris is that summation um, of a four-year term in, <laughs> in 30 seconds <laughs> i think so yes yeah yeah, great. So any other questions specifically about the budget then for Dan yeah. or Jeff? Yeah. All right, I don't see anything listed for correspondence or announcements. Uh, then no notice of motions. So April 28th, 2022, um, are, are we presuming we're doing, we're just doing Zoom until otherwise noted? Is that kind of the plan? Okay. So that'll be the plan if they'll tell us otherwise. Is there any other business to discuss that you? Nothing for me. It's April 28th and that'll be at nine o'clock again? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, and I think, okay. um, did you get the invite that we said sent through? Um, the, we all, we are, the four days are already on the calendar. If you don't have that, we can get that to you for the other two dates of 2022. They're already set nine o'clock. I think it's whatever. If so the you last give me one Thursday, second, I'm gonna get a pencil and paper. I gotta write things down. I did uh, send a calendar invites to everyone. Yeah. So he does have it. He yeah. should have it, okay. yes. I think I think I do, Labista. Thank okay. you. Okay, yeah. So the next one's April 27, 9 a.m. Is that right? Wait. I have 28. 28. Which one is it? 28. 28. Today's the 27th. Sorry. Yeah, I may have said that wrong. Yeah, so it's, is it the last Thursday of the month or the fourth Thursday of the month? I can't remember. It's a fourth. Fourth, fourth Thursday. Thursday of the month. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, great. We'll let Councilor Rose finish writing it so that he can raise his hand to vote to, to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can I have an, a motion to adjourn? All right. I, I think Councilor Rose got his hand up first. Oh, second, yes. second by Chris, uh, oh, passed second. by me. So it's great. Thanks everybody. Uh, once again, another productive meeting. Thank so, you gentlemen for uh, bringing me up to speed. Good and yeah, just- Welcome. In, Welcome, you. and if if you have um, any questions, make sure you just you can email Chris and I. We'd be happy to. I always to have discuss lots of questions. Good. No, that's great. That's Hopefully great. We have Thank lots of answers. Much. Yeah, we'll have answers whether they're good or not. But <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's up for you to judge. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have, have a, a good, good day. day. Thank you.